I sat there, I was all by myself, and I just, and I cried. I told you guys, this guy was holding that in all season. He's been wanting to cry. Like, this is just one of those situations out of his hand. He just wanted it so bad. Couldn't do anything about it, man. I told you guys he wanted to cry, and now he just admitted it. Everything I say it just comes to fruition. I just sat there, it was the first time I just kind of let it all come crashing down on me. See, it was the first time he let it come crashing down on him. See, I told you guys, it was weighing on him and he wanted to cry. Even back at that uh, interview with that reporter when they kept prying and poking at him, I told you then, you could see it in his eyes. He wanted to cry then, but now he just admitted it. When I look at what Drew went through, I look at someone who is very unselfish. I think that lesson's embedded in me. There's nothing you can accomplish in football without everyone else, without the team, without the coaches, without the fans, without your families. You know, it's the ultimate team sport. And Brady should also learn from that experience that he's the old guy now. That can be him one day, especially now that he's still playing. And I think but I think that's why he's also doing one-year contracts, so that can't happen to him. So he's there for a year or two, and then that he's gone. Like, he's not going to be in that juice. A Bledsoe situation. For Tom, it was an important lesson that you have to fight to stay in that position, to never give it up. And you got to do whatever it takes to continue to do what you do at a high level. If that's the case, Blue, Drew Bledsoe won that AFC championship game. He beat him out. Technically, shouldn't he kept his job, his job if that's the case? But no, they gave it back to Brady. So I'd probably have to say that that statement is false. Because it's always that thought that how I got my job and what I went through to get it. There's somebody always knocking. You gotta be ready when your opportunity presents itself. I don't think I was physically prepared. Was I mentally and emotionally ready? Absolutely. I had a confidence in me. I always felt like, you know, even going back to Michigan, I always said, man, if they put me on the field, they're never gonna take me off. And I remember I was eating breakfast in uh, Ann Arbor after a game one day in my senior year. My parents were in there with me. We were at breakfast that day after the game. And I said, one day, I'm going to be a household name. You know? And I said it as a joke. But, man, I think now I look back fucking 23 years later and I go, fucking household name. Yeah, but your dad wasn't laughing when you said that. Your dad knew it. Or he told you it. Like, let's be honest here. Like, let's really be honest about this. Like, let's stop playing. It's like anything, it's progress and it's evolution. It's a series of small steps that seem so insignificant.